What really got me with the song were the lyrics because they spoke to what I'm going through on my journey. And I think that's why a lot of people really are drawn to you and your lyrics and your song is because they feel like they can relate to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's like, that's what it was really about is because it's a, it's like one of those things that like, you know, like obviously with my situation, people don't really address corruption because you know, they get set up. Um, it's not the case every time. So like, I still encourage it for people just do it the correct way and the safe way. And then of course, sex abuse, it's like super common. Like I was abused twice and only one of them went to jail and it, people just overlook it because it's so common. So, uh, I wanted to make a song that actually got out there and, um, real life stories to bring awareness to domestic violence human trafficking, and systemic corruption. Welcome to our podcasts and lives. We are so happy that you joined us and hope that you like and follow us and would love for you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Let the show begin. Saint with us this week, and the lovely Kate on Stone has joined us again. And Saint has, I don't know if y'all have heard this song that she has out right now, but mind blowing. It is just so beautifully and truthfully written. I mean, just the, the power and the emotion and the energy behind it is something uh, pretty spectacular. So we've got uh, these two lovely joining us and I'm so excited to hear more about your music and everything that you have going on Saint. Yeah I'm excited to talk about it for once. Good good well you're more than welcome to, to come join us and talk on our platform anytime you want to. And what really got me what really got me with the song were the lyrics because they spoke to what I'm going through on my journey and I think that's why a lot of people really are drawn to you and your lyrics and your song is because they feel like they can relate to it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's like, that's what it was really about is because it's a, it's like one of those things that like, you know, like obviously with my situation, people don't really address corruption because you know, they get set up. Um, it's not the case every time. So like, I still encourage it for people just do it the correct way and the safe way. And then of course, abuse it's like super common like i was actually abused twice and only one of them went to jail and it people just overlook it because it's so common so uh i wanted to make a song that actually got out there and um you know could reach people and then like i was super proud of myself yesterday because I'm, I'm like really shy believe it or not and i actually made flyers with the qr code to my song is just like randomly handing them out at walmart gas stations and everything so what? Share that awesome. with me and I'll put it on my flyers. Okay. It should, the QR code should be on all my social media if you want to screenshot it at some point. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is a beautiful song. Okay. It, just, it just gives so, you yeah. chills and the emotion and the energy is just off the chain. Very well done. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let's listen to it for a minute and then we'll go into a little bit about the story and how the song came about. Does that sound good? Okay. All good to me. Okay. Is it in full screen? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Day after day, I've been chasing, chasing, running with my head in the clouds. I'm tired, but I'm trying to be patient. Putting in my 10,000 hours, my 10,000 hours. Been doing this a little bit, almost gave up. Gotta lay down on myself, had to pick myself up, almost kill myself twice. Lost everything, doing one thing right, but at least if I saved one kid, I'll take every single fucking hit. Never gonna show me if you made me an advocate by doing what you did. Look. That was when it gets against the pedophiles. That was when it gets against corruption. The bars are the bullshit assumptions. You could talk crap on name, but you better hope I never hear fame. I'ma use every platform that I've ever had. Expose every dirty cop, expose every pedophile, every dang bad. I'm a thou out now, pull them out. And P.I. you got shit left to lose. What about you, huh? You can only hide in your life so long that make your own noose. By the time this is done, you'll be wishing for my shoes. By the time this is done, you'll be picked up in a noose. By the time this is done, you'll be plastered on a noose. <laughs> Day after day, I've been 
Those lyrics, though. <laughs> I know. Don't they just make you feel like, okay, this is representing all the advocacy for and how much time we put into trying to protect the children. I, I love it. It speaks to my soul. <laughs> yeah. And we have to get more people to uh, be better play alongers. There are children <laughs> suffering that. Yeah. Our help. They don't have the voice. They don't have the strength. They don't have the knowledge. They do not have the ability to get or keep themselves safe. That is our responsibility as the adults and as society for us to hold people accountable that are not doing the right things. Yes. Yeah. It's interesting because I think that the tipping point people will actually do something might be after so many people really fully dance. And the problem with this is that there is something called a cognitive dissonance and it doesn't allow people to see outside of their confirmation bias and what they've already made up their mind about their world. And unfortunately for most people, that is that our government is safe and that they're going to do good things for us. And that is the just world fallacy. I think once people understand that the tipping point is going to be somewhat dangerous because if we don't raise awareness before there is ultimate control set into place, then we what would we have to do? We'd have to have some sort of revolution. So a girlfriend of mine is a cop in London, and she said that there are rights activists, they're climate rights activists or climate activists, but basically they are trying to make it so that we can only travel 15 miles away from our home or to go to the groceries or the doctors or whatever it is, which kind of sounds like it plays into the meta verse, right? I just noticed that we're getting less and less freedoms. And one of those freedoms is the advocacy that we do. We want to advocate for children's rights. <laughs> she has a um, really good story about how this all came to fruition. Well, I'm excited to hear your story. And uh, to hear what got you involved in, in music and, and what uh, brought about uh, this song. So, well, music I've been doing since I was 12. I originally started out by writing poetry. And just like every white rapper, I came across an Eminem CD. And uh, that was pretty much the end of that. But um, this song... <laughs> This song was really, really different because this stems from a situation where I was set up after I went after a cop. So basically, I had turned in a local cop for being a pedophile after his ex-wife had told me that he had been having sex with high school students since I was 14. Well, when it came out, she recanted and they started harassing me via social media and like coming by my house. My house got caught at threats to my family, threats to my animals. Like the whole nine yards, we have videos of uh, the police department creeping by my house and shining flashlights on it when they had no calls in the area. Just like crazy, crazy harassment. And um, I had made a TikTok video about what was happening to me. I didn't mention anybody's name or anything. And it went viral twice. And that pissed them off. So they got with the next girlfriend of mine and they all got together and figured out how to set me up. So next thing I know, I have cops rolling up to my house that are counting cops. And I was like, well, this isn't right because this is the city. So I kind of got the end of something. And I shut myself in and we ended up having a, two SWAT teams come out. My house got surrounded. Um, and we ended up having a 10-hour standoff, which um, led to me attempting the first time um, I saw my sleeping medicine and had a gun to my head and almost myself. Finally, one of the cops that I knew was able to tie me down and out of the house. Um, I knew pretty much all of them, all of them that were out there because I was friends with pretty much all of them. Uh, before this all took place, I used to be very pro law enforcement, which I still am. I'm just very anti-corruption and a little more hesitant. So after that, um, they went in, they got the medicine bottle, they had the pills that I took in it. I was taken to the hospital. I almost Finally, I made it through the morning after it was all out of my system. They cleared me, took me to the county jail, where I spent six months because my bond was denied twice. So in this six-month period, I 
ended up in a bunch of other crap too like you know constantly harassed because i obviously didn't fit in with the other inmates i'm no criminal and then i was put into isolation at one point which made me have a mental breakdown and it caused me to uh try to attempt suicide again i had taken a metal piece off my bracelet sharpened it and um both my wrists Take it to the hospital again and go back to the jail after I was stitched up or whatever. So I finally got a bond on October 31st and my, my family got me out that night. I was out on Halloween night and then they had state police after me for pretty much the same thing. But they were just the cop himself was at this point trying to file charges um, instead of having my ex do it. And they waited. Now, these charges, the charges that he filed on me should have been filed with the original charges. Instead, they waited nine months to file them and waited until I got out of jail to file them to try to have my bond revoked so I'd be back in there. But luckily, the judge saw through the shit and I got out in 13 hours on a PR bond. So, like, that was our last move. But, like, now, here's the weird thing is South Carolina state law states that in order to file any type of criminal charges for harassment, you have to have at least three harassment reports on this person. Not only did he not have any harassment reports on me previously or any other reports, he was also my neighbor for like six years, I think. So, and they've never had, had any complaints on me whatsoever. And so all of a sudden I'm, I'm harassing him because, you know, any opportunity to... over six years, if you're harassing, yeah. they would have definitely made an issue of it. Yeah. And <laughs> if I was so dangerous, then, you know, why, why would you let me babysit your kids? Why would you let me in your, you know, like there's a whole, there's a whole lot yeah. to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Just, basically, they were just trying to uh, they were just trying to get my bond revoked, so I'd go right back in. They thought they had a plan, and then it blew up in their face because you know lots of ju- the judge was stupid as judge. Anyway, so now I'm facing two two misdemeanors and a felony charge. I have court coming up for that this last uh, misdemeanor charge on May 17th, and we still don't have a court date for the first two charges, which we're probably going to take the trial if they're not dropped. Because we have more than enough to prove that my ex was lying about everything and that it was actually the other way around. So um, we have like over 600 files, actually, from videos, audio. uh, We hire private investigators. uh, We have tons of shit, basically. (laughs) I can't say all of it because, you know, given the circumstances, but we have a lot. So uh, that that whole predicament. Um, and then also, like I said previously, I was friends with, you know, the police department had a nonprofit dedicated to humanizing them. And uh, all the ones I thought were good cops, you know, stood there silent like cowards while I was outing a pedophile and nobody stepped up to, you know, uphold their oath and their morals. So um, I basically just thought I cut off communication with almost every cop I knew. And it's like, that was pretty much the end of that for me. And I underwrote this song. So that's the short version. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, that must have been so hard. I remember the shock to my system when I realized how corrupt our actual world is and how corrupt our government is like it was such a shock to my system and i can't even imagine being in isolation locked up and for and wrongly accused facing severe charges like yeah and it yeah. happens and so it much up. more just, frequently than what people think too mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, yes. this one, this Thank you. Part, so this wasn't, yeah, this wasn't the first time that this has happened. Like in 2022, I was a private investigator and went after three dirty cops, a firefighter, a slut agent, and a solicitor, and they destroyed my life. And I went to jail, jail on, they tried to say I impersonated a slut agent. And then I was actually forced to plead guilty to that because my lawyer basically, like, if you don't just take this little misdemeanor charge, they're going to try to come after you with something harder. So just bite it and expunge it. So I did. So this one, this is the first time I've been to jail for going after dirty cops. The second time. Well, third now. Wow. Yes, That's retaliation is very real. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting how they manipulate the system for their own demise. So I really love the melody part of your music video. And I was wondering, did you create that part as well? Or did you work with um, someone to do that? No, actually, um, I'm not really good at writing books, which is the chorus. Um, I'm not repetitive. I'm a lyricist. So I, for some reason, I can't do it. So I usually buy my beats with the hooks. And I think that beat was uh, is bought from, his name's like Freak Van something. But he, oh, uh, nice. he's actually like 
he like makes beats and hooks and stuff for like you know people like like Lady Gaga, Miley Cyrus, stuff like that. So like he's huh? industry level too. Nice. Nothing. I didn't even know that was a thing that you could do that. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 And now I'm working with the guy. He actually retired out of the industry and he started um, this place. It's like nonprofit in Charlotte called Backspins, which is a whole studio. And we're working together to uh, produce my first album that I'm hoping to release by the end of June, but I'm not sure yet. That nice. Is- Congratulations. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. That is really, really awesome. And I'd love to support you with any uh, motion graphics if you need yeah, yeah, I appreciate that because, like, the whole, all this, everything that I'm doing, like, the music itself is not new. But, like, for instance, like, I went out to uh, the Backspin studio, uh, I think, Monday. I thought I was just going to go meet some people, say, hey, and Claude had a different idea. And, like I said, I'm shy. He said, like, he, um, there's a group of people that came out, like, a lot of talented artists, actual producers. They're basically like, we're going to give you a custom beat, and you have 30 minutes to write lyrics to it. And I'm like, what the? can't even write something in 30 days like so um <laughs> that was the first challenge and then he was like all right then we're gonna go into the studio and not only are, are y'all gonna record it y'all are gonna be filmed or recording it and i was like oh shit i managed to do it and like it's part of me kind of coming out of my sh- my show and uh kind of getting past my anxiety i was still like really hesitant and then weirdly one of the biggest things that changed me on the way I look at stuff and like being shy is uh I went to my friend uh Shawnee had called me she was basically like hey get dressed we're going to a Hosier concert I've never been to a concert so I was like oh okay and I love Hosier so <laughs> we get there and I just remember like seeing the crowd and the energy and how they respond to this one person and his music and I just like remember looking at Shawnee and I was like I want this I was like and I'm not gonna stop till I have all of it so it's that's pretty intense. much it. it's really intense yeah, yeah. So I, i've never seen anything like that and i love that you want to shine that's beautiful because if you're a light worker man you're bringing that light you're grounding that light boom absolutely can I spread my wildfire yes and we're gonna promote this because this is the perfect advocate song For all of our advocates, for everybody who wants to protect the children, this is our song. I'm just going to claim it. (laughs) I'm, like, really glad that, because, like, when I was writing this song, like, I honestly, like, I'm a perfectionist, so I'm really weird about my music. I didn't think it was good enough, but I sent it off to the quad and his engineer, and they mixed and mastered it and everything. And the way it turned out, I was, like, semi-satisfied, so I was like, okay, I'll go ahead and release it. But I had no idea that it was going to turn into this. So it's and it's still like it's still going viral right now on TikTok. So really well written. And it's there's such a desperate need for attention and awareness to be brought to this topic. There's not mm-hmm. many people that are talking about it and yeah. those who are talking about it i mean as an advocate just about any advocate you speak with i mean we're we get a shadow band our videos get they're hidden intentionally and so it's it's hard to gain any kind of traction just trying to speak the truth so it's um it's really spectacular that it has had such amazing success and really excited to see what kind of awareness you'll be able to bring just, you know, with, with a song, it's crazy how something as simple as a song can do so much with something that you know needs to have something done. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, it, that's what I love about music. Yes. Like it's an inspiration. It can start yeah. a revolution. <laughs> yes. So if you're watching this video, you should go to TikTok and follow Saint Con, Saint K-O-N, and look for the 10,000 hours video uh, with the music that you can use uh, for your own videos. And just let's blow this video up by duetting and or using the sound from her videos so that we can help spread awareness before TikTok gets banned. <laughs> right. I'll tell us about that, the description below, too, for the YouTube video and her TikTok account. So if you want a quick, easy way to find her, just check in the description, and I'll give those to you down below. So um, where are you going today, Saint? Looks like you're on an adventure. <laughs> the beach. <laughs> 
Yeah, I need I need the ocean. The ocean is my happy place, and I'm getting. Well, actually, I'm on the way to my best friend's house. Lower, we're gonna switch cars and then take the last two hours in his car. But uh, we we tend to have a good time. We don't have any drama when it's just us and stuff like that. So it's it's much needed, especially with the stress of court coming up and everything, and not knowing what's gonna happen. We still haven't got we uh we had requested the motion to discovery from Sled, which is our state police, over a month ago, and they're probably gonna do what they did in 2022 and wait till like one or two weeks before court, then send it last minute trying to pressure mm-hmm. into some bullshit so i mean we're probably gonna have to ask for a continuance but there's a good chance that i'm probably gonna ask for a trial on this misdemeanor too which you know i know yeah. they're not gonna want nobody's gonna want that but i mean so be it and yeah. that's that and you can't let them push you around though either yeah you know, if, if if yeah. they want to play ball, then they better come ready to play ball. Yeah, yeah well, so- I think what they forget is that I'm. I mean, I know all their tricks. Like I was, they literally taught them to me. Like I know all y'all's little tricks. I know the loopholes. I know all the bullshit y'all are about to pull. Like I'm not slow. Like y'all obviously literally taught all this when I was friends with law enforcement. So and on top of being a PI, so it's not like they're gonna do anything. It's really gonna surprise me. Yeah, I think the thing you have to worry about the most is them trying to get out of the evidentiary hearing so i think pushing for a jury trial is probably the best thing that you can absolutely do as long as that someone will grant it you know what i mean so yeah i know that my lawyer was supposed to be sitting down with the solicitor for the two main charges and uh showing him some of what we had to see if he was gonna drop it or if he actually did want to just continue on to trial but if we continue on to trial and I have to go that far, like when this is over, I mean, I'm going to be rich, basically. Which, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, we're going yeah. to have pending lawsuits. Like, I mean, we're suing everybody. I'm going to be pushing for charges. Like, if they don't drop this stuff, like, we're going to take it to the next level. Like, if I have to go all the way to trial, yes, I'm going to sue. Yes, I'm going to push for, for uh, charges. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm going to do everything that y'all did. So, I mean... As well, you should. I mean, that's a lot of trauma that it that it puts on yeah. on us as victims of illegal activity being forced upon us. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a very traumatic yeah. experience. It's very time consuming. It is stressful emotionally and mentally, which then in turn stresses your body out physically. I mean, that's it's not OK for people to do that. And as society and as communities. If we don't hold these people accountable, they will continue to do what they do. I mean, and that's a big part of the reason why they get away with so much stuff is because they're not held accountable. There's just so many people that are, uh, what's going to be done about it anyways? Kid, I'm not even going to worry about it. Well, or they're scared because, you know, what, like things that happen to me, like the, the retaliation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but if we all stand up, then, exactly. I mean, that's... That's a lot of people to try to retaliate against. And yeah, that's it'll right. get to the point eventually to where that's not going to be, you know, they're not going to be able to get away with that. But it will take us as society coming together and rising up. Exactly. That's where they budged up is they made so many of us that we're stronger together. And as long as we're all being brave and like actually speaking up, about what is happening, then we can possibly show them our numbers and scare them back to the depths of hell from which they came. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. Like, we wanted, we wanted to actually because we started um renegades against corruption and pedophiles, and we actually were wanting to get like a group together for a couple of peaceful protests. But a lot of the people that are supporting this aren't even in South Carolina, unfortunately. So. Uh, um, yeah, it's a process, and I don't know how many people would want to fly out to South Carolina, but, I mean, there's nothing torn out here. I hate this state. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, like, it's a it's a whole process, and a lot of us be folks, too. Maybe you could do it in D- D.C. Maybe. I mean, I yeah, a lot of people would do that. Yeah, a lot of people would do that, something like that. Or you could have like a beach vigil and have people show up to the beach and protest at the beach. People would do that. Well, I wanted the protest to be at the department that made the mistake of filing false charges on me after conducting an yeah. improper investigation. Yes, that's a good idea. I want the well, people that are responsible and held accountable. 
yeah, start yeah. putting out some uh, TikToks and such, looking for other victims in your area. Because if they pulled that shit with you, you damn well, sure ain't I the did. only one. I did, but I have to be careful because they are watching my TikTok like a hawk right now. So if I do oh. anything that can encourage anything that's illegal, it doesn't matter. Like, but I have to just be super careful because we don't want to give them anything they can use against me. So if I'm like, oh, hey, like, let's all get together and go protest here, or th like, they're going to be like, oh, she's inciting riots. Yeah. Like, they're going to twist school, basically. So, and we actually found a couple of his victims. But one of them, after I got locked up, basically vanished. And I don't know if the other one's going to talk or not. Um, the FBI is involved. That uh, I don't know what they're doing because the FBI is very quiet. They're basically like they take your information and then they kind of just disappear. And then they pop back up when they need to talk to you. Yeah. So, well, hopefully they're <laughs> doing something. But like apparently this was not the first time. And I was not the first person to come to, the, to them about him specifically with these allegations this isn't the first time and it's not even the second time from my understanding wow so, so uh, you can apparently it's been going on a while yeah you can also check out each court player like each cop or the judge on a website called justia and i'll send you the link of where you okay. go to exactly so that you can put in their name and it'll pull up any lawsuits against them so or that have happened or that are these people. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he was sued, but I know that he was turned into the feds before. From my understanding, from what I was gathering, the way they spoke, that there was already an ongoing investigation that they've had going for a few years. Yes. Yeah, so I've heard of this too. So I've heard there's a huge, huge investigation going on in 42 states in the United States. And in the last two years, we've had around six uh, judges who have unalived themselves because they were under investigation um, with the FBI. Yeah, I think it's also the U.S. Marshals. I think you. I think it's the Project Safe, Safe Project Safe Kid or Project Safe Child. Because I spoke to oh. the Marshals as well, so. I, they're also involved. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, we couldn't go to the state police, obviously, because state police took his side and came after me again. So we just went to the feds and the marshals. So, and I've actually been in continuous contact with the marshals about all this. Uh, skip all the <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, I'm like, well, I have to go to the fucking U.S. Marshals. Like, that's one, it's ridiculous. I should be able to go to state police and you do your job. But two, it's uh, the fact that they, uh, because I contacted the Project Safe Child line, and that's how I got a hold of them. And they're, I mean, they have investigations going on in South Carolina, but I mean, I didn't really get a lot of details on it. But I've been in contact with them about this. So that's nice. Good, good. So is it's that hard to even find somebody to give a shit in the government sometimes? A lot of times with, with problems like this, it's hard to even get anybody to listen. Yeah, that's very true. You, yeah. I, luckily, like I've made a lot of friends and connections throughout the years in the United States, like all over. I basically I went up the chain of command here as you're supposed to do, and then I started making phone calls outside of state because I I'm just tired of the bullshit. I've lost everything. I lost my house, my vehicle, my business, my reputation, my career. I lost everything after I turned this dude in and went to jail for shit I didn't even do. Yeah, I'm, I can I can say I'm pissed off at this point. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and it's sad that, I mean, it, it takes that anymore, anymore these days because you don't, and unless and until you become a victim of it, you just, you don't really know. You don't really get it. And you don't really understand just how uh, all of this is and just how deep it goes and how serious it is and how much damage is really truly being done. And yeah. Unfortunately, you know, I mean, that's that's where all of us advocates come from is we went through the BS and, you know, we try to save others, you know, from experiencing that or help others who are currently going through that. And it's just so hard as an advocate to get people to listen. There's just so many yeah. that are, nah, there's no way that's not true. And then and they just then find off. out you're like, well, Damn, which, mm -hmm. you know, coming from my perspective, I tell you, if you would have told me 10 years ago that 
I would be in the situation that I'm in today, that I would have had the courts turn their back on me, that I would have had the police departments turn their back on me, prosecutors, you know, agencies put in, into place to help victims. They have all failed us. Every yes. one has failed yes. us. Yes. And if you had told me 10 years ago, this is going to happen. I said, well, there's plenty of things out there to help people in situations like that. That's what courts for. That's what protection orders are for. And, you know, it's all bull. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the yeah, that's, how, that's how I was, too. Yeah. Like, I was so pro law enforcement. I was like, dirty, like, no good cops going to stand behind a dirty cop. They'll out them. They'll out them. Da, 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 da. Like, man, I didn't realize how long I was till I was already screwed. <laughs> Yeah, there's a bro code. There's a bro code for sure. Yep. I've so, seen it. Yeah, I've seen one. one. And I know so many officers need to understand that by them behaving that way and by them enforcing a bro code, one, you're right off the bat violating your oath that you took. And two, you're putting your ass on the line now and you're giving yourself a reputation for what? To back up something that normally as a human being, you would say, hey, that's not okay. But what, because it's a police officer and one of your buddies? Oh, we're just going to sweep this under the rug. Come on, people. We have we have more values and better morals than that. And it's time we start using them. So this is a, an abuser tactic. It's called apologist. Abuser apologist is what somebody is who defends somebody who is an abuser. And so it's literally a tactic that they will manipulate or kind of like coerce their friends or coworkers into supporting them through that, through that natural, I don't know, but it's got a label. Fuckery? Abuser <laughs> apologist. Abuser apologist. <laughs> and it's so interesting because we know so many of them and it makes them implicit to the abuse. So they are also abusers because they are protecting the abuser. They're not holding them accountable. So what we're trying to convey to the world is that we need to do a citizen's arrest. We need to put a citizen's arrest to the system and say, no more, no more. You guys don't get it. Just around and do whatever you want to do and protect each other and protect abusers. Like we want accountability, yeah. and a lot of the, get out of the way, and a lot of the excuses I would hear from the cops that I talked to when I got out was, "Oh, we didn't want to be in the drama, or we were worried that it would put our our badge at risk." And I'm just like, "That's not how this shit works." Like, it's literally your job. Matter, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. you took an oath, honor it. Like yeah. I'm very, like, very big on like if you take a note, honor it. Like I was actually going to be a cop. I wanted to go be DEA and then retire into internal affairs to go after dirty cops. But you know they've all ruined that for me at this point. But uh, yeah, like it's not an excuse. And like some of the like the people I, like I was closest with, like the ones that I thought were just white cops, who were pieces of or cowards or both. Yeah. So I had a swear. Like, um, there was somebody here in my hometown that had had run for for office for sheriff at one point in time. And he was all about calling out the corruption and all about standing up for the people and doing the right thing and making sure the right thing was going to be done in our community and blah, 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 blah. Well, they uh, wanted to shut him up and dangled a fancy little job in front of his face and now he's conformed and you know i had him uh, he was involved in our case for for a brief period of time and uh you know was helping me look into everything and he's just oh my gosh this is crazy and you know i wasn't really sure that i believed you from the beginning but now that i'm i'm looking into everything they're treating me the same way and oh my gosh blah 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 we're going to get that get to the bottom of this and and i'm going to help keep you know help you keep your daughter safe and the judge apparently got wind and approached him and told him sorry you're not allowed to work with them because they're currently going through a court case um he he works for the court system he does uh, works with children and such there's a program that they have to 
you know, if a child is, you know, causing trouble, it's like a diversion type sort of program to, you know, help put kids on the right path before they get into trouble and get caught up into the legal system and such. And I had my daughter in that because with, you know, all of the trauma with our case and the effects that it's had on her, she was having a lot of behavioral issues and such. And so the judge went to him and it's like, oh, you can't take that case. Well, that's weird because I personally know other people that have their children in that and are going through the same thing. So it was just a tactic for her to try to, you know, take away, you know, uh, an opportunity and ability for us to get through and to get justice. And they just snowball us every chance that they get. So I had a run in with a dirty cop in uh, Hawaii and... It was interesting because at the beginning, when I first submitted my evidence, he was so sure we were going to win. He told me, go get a protective order. But then he found out that my ex hired like the most famous lawyer on the island. And then he like snuck me some advice on the elevator because he knew nobody was listening or watching. And he told me just to get out of town and try to go to where my family was and try to bring it up all there because he knew that they were going to bury it. And then I went, because I had video evidence of child sexual assault. And so when I went into uh, the courtroom, they literally mocked me. And then after that, he uh, took my daughter right after a forensic exam and placed her into child foster care and said that was the only way to protect her from going with her father but then the very next day tried to ask me if I would recant my story so wow I, yeah they literally are just POSs and I remember I had to give him he said I had to give him my laptop to see if my ex was like you know distributing anything through my laptop And because of the video that I gave them, they wanted that and my hard drive. So I had to give it to them. And they took my ex's guns because, you know, they were trying to protect us or whatever. But three days later, my ex got all of our guns, including mine. And they never, ever gave me back my laptop or my hard drive. And then when I walked into the police station after that, he looked me up and down. Did you know that I had... Before, because I mean, I was married, I was with my ex husband for 12 years. So he recorded something, put it on the laptop, and they had it. And so he was, he literally looked my body up and down when I walked into his office. And I was like, what the heck? And now I've had like three people tell me that they've seen porn with me in it. So either my ex or the cops have put that out on the internet. What the fuck? Yeah. And they still, they never, ever gave me back my laptop, which was like a $3,000 laptop because I needed a gaming computer for all my animation that I was doing at the time. And they uh, took my oscillating camera fan, like it was a fan that was a camera, it's a Nanny camera, like a hidden camera. They stole that too. And it was like $400. They wouldn't even give it back. Gave my Glock. Get my gun to my ex. I don't see. I just don't get how they can do that like that, and then they just get away with it. And there's nothing. Yeah, you, they what, have what have you do? They have impunity, so they just work under their bro code, and they think that that's going to protect them in all cases. And and for this cop, it did because now he's the sergeant. Of course, there is one group um, of cops that actually goes after dirty cops that I came across on a TikTok. I think they're called Shadow O's. And um, they were going to help me, but we didn't have a lot at that time to give them. And we were kind of hesitant on giving them anything. Also, just because of everything going on. Yeah, Shadow O's is apparently like a group of cops that go after dirty cops. Nice. And they're like all still like on duty. I don't think they're like, there might be like a couple that are retired. But I think they're all, most of them are just still all active duty as well. Nice. And that's what we need. We need people in power. We need you to stop being silent. Yeah. Speak out. We need 
help. And there are so many, I'm not going to be naive enough to think that it's everyone, that all judges are bad, all guardian at litems are bad, all officers are bad. I'm fully aware that they are not. But the problem is that the good ones are not doing enough to bring light to the real topic, well, the real problem. Yeah, the problem is, just like Ted Gunderson, head of CIA for 27 years, said, the problem is, is that those who seek to do harm have been putting themselves in positions of power. They've they have told each other, let's infiltrate the system. They put themselves in power. And so we need to infiltrate the system back. So I don't know. I think more good people need to be cops. Good people need to be lawyers and judges. And, and people who have been through this kind of stuff need to come forward and place themselves back into positions of power so that we can take back the government. Yeah. Well, I know it. Like, I, if we ever get these charges dropped, I know the first thing I'm doing is applying to be a police officer. Just to, one, despite them, fuck them. And two, because, yeah. like, I, I do want to do internal affairs at this point. Like, I'm dead set on it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We yeah. have to start getting the, all these advocates and all these people that have experienced this trauma. I know you feel that calling. And you're, you're feeling called to do something, but you don't know what. This mm -hmm. is it. You have to yeah. stand up and use your voice and get yourself into some sort of position to be able to do good. Yeah. And we have to infiltrate that system back. And they've had quite a few years. So they've had about 50, 60 years that they've been working on taking control. And I think they've done a great job, but we're going to just have to take that back. Yeah, I hope they enjoy it while it lasts because that's coming to an end very quickly. Yes, yes, <laughs> this ends now. We are coming. Yes, no yeah. more. All right, guys, thank I only have you. about five more minutes too, so. Well, okay. let's just say thank you to you then. So thank you for being our inspiration. Thank you for creating community. We yes. pre appreciate your advocacy. Make sure you let me know when you your album. Work. And I'll have you back on and we'll do some stuff okay. to promote your album. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Hopefully, like I said, it'll be at the end of June, but um, we'll see. I'm excited so, to hear it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, enjoy your day at the beach. You are an inspiration. Right. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to chat with us. I really appreciate yeah. your time. Well, thanks for and having thank me. You, and I will say what? Go ahead. Uh, I was just saying thanks for having me and everything and let me, you know, talk about my story and everything. So I want it, I want people to know that they're not alone. That's the whole point in all of this. Absolutely. Anytime. And anytime you want to make another appearance of, you know, there's new things that are brought to light or anything that you you want to get out and talk about just let me know i do this all the time so yeah, yeah i'll definitely up on here with y'all soon great yeah. sounds good i look forward awesome. to it enjoy your time at the beach. Oh, thanks ladies all right, thanks. Talk to later. okay bye. talk to you later